This morning I'd like to talk to you about hope versus wishing. Hope versus a wish. The Bible says in Romans 5, 1 through 6, it reads, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith, and to hit into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died, for the ungodly. Now as we read the passage, we talked the part of the subject was hope. And you know when you're young, you wish a lot. Yeah. You want things. And you wish that you had things. And as I was thinking, contemplating on what God wanted me to talk about today, it came back to my mind. And and I have learned over the years not to wish, but to hope. So I decided to look up the definition, and the definition of wish is to want or desire. If you wish you had a bowl of ice cream, then that's a want or a desire. Hope is the feeling that what is wanted can be had and that the event will turn out for the best. What you want can be had. You can have it. And no matter what the circumstances are, everything is going to be all right. Amen. See, you can wish that you had a cure for cancer. But you can hope in Jesus Christ that he's going to remove cancer from you. See, in this church, we've seen cancer healed. That's right. We've seen cancer removed. That's right. So we don't have to wish when we have something to base our hope on. You know, if you had a family history of something, influenza, whatever, there is now a shot immunization that you can take and not get it. So you can wish that you didn't get it, or you can act on what's already there and not get it. We have something already in place. We have a way through Jesus Christ that we can hope and we can be sufficiently prepared for anything that happens in this world. When you go through that, 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 that topic of verses I just read, it tells about going through trouble. It says through, in the third verse, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is going to seem real strange to people who don't have a Christ, a God in their life, a Savior in their life. That you can be happy through hard times. Yes. Paul is saying that no matter what you, what's going on around you, you can have joy in Jesus. That's right. That you can, you may not like going through, none of us like going through hard times. We don't like going through tribulation. We don't like going through trouble. But going through the trouble, we can still praise God. That's right. We can still lift up the name of Jesus Christ because we know where our, <laughs> we know where our hope lies. That's right. 
Our hope is not in whether the mail brings a check tomorrow. Because there are people with money <laughs> who are still having profit. See, it, it, it's your point of view how you All look right at now. things. All right. Somebody will go through a hard time. Somebody will go through not having a job. And it will be the end of their life. They can't do it. I've worked all my life. I can't sit at home. I can't do it. And somebody else, oh, I needed that break. Mm. I'll look for another job in two or three months. It's all how you look at it. Your hope has got to be not in the physical thing. See, you know, that, that this whole thing, you wish up on a star. You see a falling star and the first one make a wish, I'll get it. Now, you can wish on things. Or you can have your hope in Jesus. All right. You can wish that you had all the money in the world, but um, all the money in the world will not get you what you want. See, our job as Christians is to go and tell somebody about Jesus. There are people out here in this world who think that God is, is looking for this perfect person, that I've got to get myself right, I've got to be perfect before I can approach God and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. No, no. I wasn't perfect. We are all sinners. But we strive every day to be perfect. Amen. To have a closer relationship with God. See, that's the key. I want to get closer to God every day. I want to do better every day. I start out every day. This is going to be a perfect day because I'm going to be perfect. And you know, somewhere down the line, you might fail. But what we have to depend on it's Christ. Christ said, if you try, I'm going to be with you. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you try, I will forgive you. But now, if you're going to do the same thing, some of us have a routine of lying and cheating and sinning. You know, every week, 5 o'clock on Monday, I'm going out here and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to ask God to forgive me afterward, but I'm going to do this. I know what I'm going to say, I'm just going to do it. Well, guess what? One of these days, you ain't going to get it. You ain't going to come back from that. God ain't going to be with you always. The Bible says that we're going to seek him and won't find him. So why are you out there in your mess? Why are you out there wishing your hope is far from you? Titus 1 and 1 says, Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie promised from the world, began, but hath in due time manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commitment of our God and Savior. Paul was committed to God's word, committed to translating God's word, to giving God's word to those around him. We who are children of God, we who have established ourselves as Christians, we have a, a job to do, and that's to tell somebody about Jesus, to tell somebody about God's word. No matter whether you're a preacher, teacher, just somebody back there in the back who's sweeping up every day, you still are committed to telling somebody about Jesus. If you don't tell them verbally, you ought to tell them with your actions. We ought to walk upright before man. Well, they tell you today that you can't. And let me tell you, it's hard. You have to stay in Christ. And that's not easy. We are still flesh. And staying in God, in God's will and way, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, would take God. It would take God. You see, God is available. But let me tell you now, He can't be perfect. Jesus Christ was the only perfect man. We have to strive that. I cannot tell you about your sins by first looking at mine. Right. Pastor ain't perfect. Pastor wants to be perfect. He tries all he can to be perfect. And pastor's a whole lot more perfect than a lot of people. But sin is sin. That's if right. God comes back, if Christ comes back and I'm out there in my sin, and pastor been doing this for 
Woo, a lot of years. Right at 24, 25 years. Passed him somewhere. But if God comes, Jesus Christ comes back, and I'm out there in the sin, and I haven't asked for forgiveness, I go to hell. That's just it. I have worked all these years. I've come to church all this time for nothing. So, stay prayed up. Keep your hope in Jesus. See, I don't find it unreasonable to give my life to Romans 12 and 1 say, a living sacrifice. See, that's what, what, what some of us want to do. We think that God is going to change. He has changed over the years. The, the, God, the, the God of Paul and Silas. Well, he ain't that strict anymore. God, can't, Jesus Christ loves us. He doesn't require all this anymore. Well, you can't be more than wrong. Because you're wrong. And wrong is just wrong. That ain't a little wrong. Or a lot of wrong. Just like it ain't a little sin and a lot of sin. It's just sin. It's just wrong. God is the same. He said my word is the same. I say I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So his requirements are the same. No matter when you got in. No matter when you started this Christian walk. That young lady back there. When she started her Christian walk. When she started her Christian walk. Her requirements are going to be the same as yours right now. I'm a lot older. But the requirements are the same. That's right. If you've been in this way, if you've been calling yourself a Christian for the last 10 years and somebody's still having to explain God to you, explain the requirements to you, then you are in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Go back there to the number one class in Bible study, Sunday school, and have them read it to you so you can grow. Because obviously you ain't praying. You ain't asked God to lead you and guide you. Your hope is in something other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is your hope. And when you get to the point where you're willing to sacrifice, put your love and your dedication for somebody else ahead of your well-being, then you will know what hope in Christ really is because Christ died for you. Your hope ought to be in who hopes for you. He said, I see. Philippians 1, verse chapter 20, verse, according to my earnest expectation, and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Christ be magnified. Whether I live or whether I die, let my actions be magnified in Christ. Let everybody know. That whether I live or whether I die, I'm doing this. I'm standing here, I'm walking, I'm talking for the love of Christ. Right. It's in Christ that I live, I breathe, I have my being. It's in Christ that I put my trust. Right. Not in the everyday thing, not in that truck out there that's got over 200 some thousand miles on it. And I only had it for uh, a little over a year. It's in Christ. I believe that Christ will take care of me. Yeah. Up and down the road, over the dangerous highway, yeah. in and out of every stumbling block Satan can throw in front of me. Yeah. I trust Christ. My hope is not in that truck out there. Right. My hope is in Christ. That all the accidents I pass by along the way, as I pray and lift up my Lord and Savior, my yeah. hope is in Jesus. It's time, church. It's time for us to put all these other wishing and, and stuff away and put our hope where it ought to be. Our hope should be in Christ. Amen. Our love should be for our fellow man. It's time that we quit praying for ourselves first and pray for our fellow man first. Put somebody else ahead of us. Our hope is not in the things that we have. Because we could sit here and we could wish. Ooh, I wish I had a million dollars. I wish that old car was new out there. I wish, I wish, I wish. But you see, we have hope. And hope in Jesus is a whole lot more substantial than wishing and thing. So as I take my seat, I want you to know, put your hope in Christ. And put your wishes in the corner somewhere in that state. Mm -hmm. Amen. Be blessed.